just saw a lot of head pulling, you're gonna see a lot more. Gabe Dean's pace, great for a freshman, great footwork. You know when the they got duck, short. My bad. The duck. There's a snatch single by Dean. He elevates it up to his armpit. The turn, turns the knee down. He's able to pick up. Got Steinhaus's far foot off the mat. Got his takedown. We're out of bounds. 34 seconds left. Dean's got a two-point lead. Seconds left. Overtime shot just didn't have enough time to get it. Gabe Dean's gonna win this one on the snatch single. It's a tough hand fight. Gabe Dean moving over the freshman on the southern stuff for his freshman. the finals there was a nice like two hour th break there I remember going back and uh, I was sitting in Damien's hotel room with him and his wife and his son and he was like uh, Gabe uh, you know you know you got this okay well we don't need to talk about that right now I ordered room service so he brings in the room service and he brings me in uh, he gets me he got me a turkey club and some fries and obviously I was I was like all right I'm just gonna eat the sandwich <laughs> you know I'm not gonna eat the fries you know because I don't I want to feel good yeah and um, you know, I, I guess I was like, I wasn't nervous, but I was like antsy. And but uh, he was like, and he could tell. So he, you know, I finished my finished my uh, sandwich and I left the fries. He's like, hey, what, what are you doing? You gotta finish that. And I was like, you want me to eat fries before that? She's like, oh yeah, you, you better eat those. So I mean, I was like, all right. So I ate all the fries and I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, like, and he kind of was like showing me like just to relax, yeah. you know, and just like, and you know, we both knew what I needed to do. So we came back to the arena. I was warming up and uh, I, was, I got warm. And before the match, you know, we were we not even talking about it. You know, we talked like very briefly, like, hey, you know, when you know he's gonna come for that cradle, you know, you need to look into it. You know, catch his hand, stand up. Yeah. You know, but other than that, come at him, come at him, come at him. And uh, then it was just like talking, you know, Coach Cole and telling jokes. And Coach Cole was had his bout to put the MVP of the tournament in. Yeah, the most valuable wrestler. So. He had the bout. He's like, should I just go ahead and uh, pen in, uh, pencil in, you know, at Ruth? And I was like, I was like, I was like, wow, coach, like you don't got any faith in me. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, he's like, okay, you know what? I'll pencil in Gabe Dean. And, he, and then Damien was like, no, you need to pen that in. <laughs> and uh, then Mike Gray was like, no, you need to sharpie that in. So then. Kind of near the end of the second period, um, you know, we were tied. I think I was up by one actually, and we were going into the third. And uh, you know, I could feel him kind of starting to slow down, and I was like, okay, uh, you know, like, oh my gosh, like I'm starting to, I started to take over the match. And he got away. I rode him for like a minute, got rid of his riding time, and he got away. He goes out of bounds. And I pushed him out of bounds, and he went out of bounds. And he took this big breath. He put his hands on top of his head, and then I was, I was like, all right. You know, I was up by one, but yeah. I was like, I was like, I think I, you know, I got him where I want to be, and yeah. literally, come back to the middle. Ref blows a whistle. He dies like for a shot, down block, go behind two, and I was like. I, you know, I won, and uh, I remember the first thing I saw coming off the mat is Coach Cole holding his strip and said like Gabe Dean on it, and it was kind of cool. Gabe Dean, one of the biggest upsets in the history of college wrestling just happened. It was you that won the match, knock off one of the greatest all-time, two-time NCAA champ, Ed Ruth. He's 117, 118, three now. He was 172, 118 and two. You knock him off, and one of his only three losses is historic. What's the feeling like right now? Oh, it's the same thing. Go out, wrestle hard for seven minutes, let it all hang out, have fun. You know, so if it's a fluke, it's, I don't know, but I'm just wrestling, I'm having fun. So. Or, you know, maybe 
I was getting some attention um, after winning the Las Vegas thing, and but nothing crazy. Like just like I think I got ranked. I was like seventh or eighth in the country after that. I knocked off that Boise State kid in the semifinals there, but it wasn't it wasn't like like anything crazy. The only people that knew that I was on a good road was my coaches and some and my teammates, my yeah. close friends, and you know my family. But nobody else was like. Talk, the talk wasn't there, you know. Yeah. No, nobody else was just like, okay, this kid, this kid's pretty good. But everybody's like, nobody's touching the roof this year. So um, after that match, um, obviously, I, I, you know, I started to become kind of this household name throughout the year. And through, after that, and I mean, I, I remember my phone. I, just, I didn't even touch my phone, you know, after the match. <laughs> yeah. I just set it aside because I was like, oh, this, I can't, I can't deal with all this right now. I, about, I think I think I kind of had like 65 text messages. I had uh, over 200 notifications on Facebook, and like 130 something thing on Twitter. And I remember I'd, I'd go into the shower the next morning. I'd come out. I'd have I had 20 new followers on twi Twitter. Yeah. And I'd do something for another 10 minutes, and I have like another 10. And it was just like. It got to the point where I was like, okay, it was a match. Like <laughs> everybody needs to relax. Yeah. Like it, we're, you know, there's this isn't the NCAA. It wasn't the NCAA tournament. Like that's what really matters. Uh, the, the, the second he won the match, my phone started ringing. It didn't stop ringing. Like that whole night, I was just people messaging me. Did you see that? Oh my gosh! Yeah. I can't believe what happened. And everybody around Lowell was just like, man, wow! You see Gabe's match? There's a huge buzz. Guys on the team got a big lift from it, you know, because they kind of started to buy into yeah. the the way that Gabe was wrestling. You know. Yeah. Uh, my coaches did a good job of keeping me in line with that. Actually, my uncle called me that morning and was like, "Listen, you know, if you need me to push you back in place, you know, you better not be, you know, better not have a big head right now or anything like yeah. that. I'll put you right back into place." And I'm like, "I'm good. I'm good. I promise. I'm not. You know, it's just a match." And you know, and that's kind of how we went forward with it. You know, just a match. All the attention is just a distraction from our real goal, and you know, winning an NCAA title, and and and, um, and we just kind of you know pushed it to the side. Yeah. So. You know, I, I wanted to go. I wanted to get into the tournament. I wanted to start rolling. But I, I, you know, I had thoughts like, you know, oh my God, like, what if I lose the first match? Yeah. You know, like, what, what, you know, like, and like, there was people like buzzing about, you know, the people that were like, okay, he's gonna do really well. There was also people that were like, you know, it was a fluke, and you know, Gabe Dean isn't anything. You know, he's not, he's not any good, and you know, it was kind of, and I kind of kept those in the back of my mind throughout until this point. And I remember I was, I called my dad. The morning of, because I didn't have to wrestle till like 12 or 1 o'clock. Morning NCAs? Yeah, morning of the first round. Yeah. So I was sitting in my hotel room. I woke up at like 9. I was sitting there. I ate a little breakfast. I was sitting there. And I, I mean, I woke, we woke up early, weighed in, and then I came back to the hotel. Yeah. And then I was sitting there. And I was, I called my dad, and he came up, and he was like, You haven't, you know, you haven't done anything yet. I mean, yeah, you beat, you, you're one of the best guys in the country, but. Technically, you're not an All-American, you're nothing. So why don't you just approach the tournament like you're just some kid that just loves to compete, you know? And he yeah. goes, that's what you are anyways. He's like, you're not anything else. You know, your whole life you just love to compete. You know, it hasn't been any more complicated than that. Yeah. So you need to just approach this like it's just another you know, another tournament, another match. Yeah. So, you know, and I was like, you know what, he's right. And then we went in first round. It was kind of funny in my bracket it was because first two kids, Michigan, from Michigan kids, yeah. So, you know, first round went by, got all the cobwebs out, was feeling good. Then we wrestled, you know, and then I wrestled this gala and felt good, you know. Would have liked to pick up the major, but, you know, we, you know, got bad. And then we came to, you know, the next day with the quarterfinals, and I was Swartz, and, and I wrestled him in like six overtimes yeah. at, at Vegas. And then I almost majored him in the NCAA tournament. So, I mean, then I was like, all right, you know, and then obviously the showdown Saturday, yeah. um, Friday night. With Ruth, did it go in my favor? That was really tough. I, I really struggled with that one. You know, I was sitting in my hotel room, and you know, thank God I had my family with me because you know, we took about you know 20, 30 minutes, you know, just kind of silence, and then I, my dad, and my mom, everybody was like, "All right, Gabe, you know, you got to compete tomorrow. You know, you got you got to still try to yeah. you know, place as best you can." Yeah. And 
it was, it was nice to have them there and my coaches, obviously. Yeah. Well, um, breaking out of the match, I I came out firing. I got in on his leg, hit my head to the outside and sat at the corner, and we rolled and we went out of bounds. It was probably two, given the reaction time yeah. we will now. Yeah. Um, um, but kind of questionable, but they gave him the two. So, you know, going down 2-0 right away wasn't the game plan, obviously. The game plan was to stay on the attack. Well, I got out, and I got out, like, probably about 30 seconds in. He was more prepared, you know. I wasn't just, you know, he knew. Yeah. You know, I was come, I was, I was going to come out and fight him. He yeah. knew that. You know, I, I, I wasn't. A lot, most of the guys that wrestled him that year were afraid of him and would back down. And he, he was obviously more mentally prepared for me just going into that match than he was in the Southern Scuffle. Yeah. And I chose bottom, and what really went wrong there is he just, he, um, he fixed a little bit of his technique that I didn't expect, and he, uh, he rolled me out the whole period, which yeah. I wasn't able to get up and kept, keep coming after him. Yeah. And that's kind of, I think that's where the match kind of switched because I wasn't able to get off bottom and yeah. come after him. I mean, obviously, you came back, wrestled great, coming back to third. Um, looking to like you know to next year, is it is it NCAA title or bust? I mean, is that the the mentality? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that would be my mentality next year. I don't want to. I mean, obviously, there's going to be couple guys that are always trying to take. You know, I always try to say kind of like everybody else in your way class trying to take what you want. Yeah. You know, so and that and that kind of almost gets me angry. You know, like, so when I step on the mat, I kind of think about that. Like this guy's trying to kill myself. So. Coming in this next year, you know, NCAA title is obviously the number one yeah. thing. And, it, you know, if coming short, you know, NCAA tournament, NCAA tournament, it's tough. Number one seeds get knocked off all the time, you know. And people that weren't supposed to All-American, All-American, and people that were supposed to All-American don't, you know. Yeah. You got to keep that in mind. But definitely, uh, yeah, if I don't win an NCAA title, I would, I would, I would be disappointed in myself. And, uh, but you got to keep in mind that, you know, you know, it's a very, it's you know, it's the best guys in the country. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of my mentality going in.